Ah, well, good afternoon, everyone. It's been quite a day. So, as you just heard Sally mention, I did start my life as a high school teacher. Um, the students used to call me Mrs. Yashin Short, because you haven't met me in person, I'm really tiny. Uh, but it was done with such love. And back in those days when uh, I was a teacher, uh, the term disruptive was not a compliment. <laughs> so if you were described as being disruptive, that was usually uh, an, an occasion to be having a parent-teacher meeting. But today it's kind of cool to be a disruptor because it implies that someone's a real maverick. They're a bit of an out-of-the-box thinker and an innovator who challenges business as usual thinking. So Disruptors today help us to prepare for massive change. And hasn't there been plenty of that? So there's been huge disruption in so many different industries. For example, the transport industry was disrupted by Uber. The hotel industry was disrupted by Airbnb. The entertainment industry was disrupted by streaming, music by Spotify, retail by Amazon. And these are just disruptions relating to specific industries. But what we're seeing right now as a result of the coronavirus pandemic is disruption on a whole other scale. So it's not just specific industries, it's literally the entire world. And it's absolutely going to change the way we live and work in the future. And already VUCA world which you might have come across that term before. It stands for volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. And already VUCA world has now become actually super VUCA. And no one could have seen this coming. And that's exactly the point of disruption. That's the characteristic of it. It's unexpected, it's out of left field, and it catches us unaware and we are really ready for it. So it's almost like a portent that just as humanity stepped from the threshold of the second to the third decade of the 21st century, we are collectively plunged into disruption on a global scale. Now, any organisation, any business that was even slightly complacent or disbelieving about the magnitude of the tsunami of massive change coming our way will have been grabbed by the shoulders and shaken awake. So even without the impact of the coronavirus pandemic, the next 10 years was always going to be the decade of disruption. So just think back over your lifetime. Once upon a time, a truly mind-blowing idea would come along now and then. Now, it's literally every single day. Who feels like that sometimes? <laughs> Every day. So we have things like um, programmable living robots, new ways of producing food, exoskeletons for, for paraplegics, CRISPR's gene editing, organic self-healing bases on the moon. Yes, absolutely. Quantum computing, which is absolutely going to be the game changer because it will be millions, possibly billions of times faster than classical computers. Yeah, but we still can't get our teenagers to clean up their room. As an aside, just completely out of left field, on my very first visit to Russia back in the early 80s, which was the Soviet Union back then, um, the standing joke at my hotel was that we can put a cosmonaut in space, but we can't get our plumbing right. Um, so that's the, that's the paradox of, uh, of technology. But the fourth industrial revolution, which we are entering now, will be characterised by cyber-physical systems. What that means is that it's going to be the integration of digital and physical technologies, human and artificial intelligence, human learning, machine learning, actual reality with virtual reality, 
And we know that the pace of change around this is just utterly exponential. In fact, it's even faster than we think it is. So, I mean, we know the world is moving really fast, but it's moving faster than we think it is. By the end of this century, 2099, we will have gone through the equivalent of something like 20,000 years of technological development. So that means that our children and grandchildren in 2099, looking back at us now, will be as far removed from us technologically as we are from Cro-Magnon Man. So I think we need an extra A on the end of that VUCA, and it might be the word accelerating. It is an accelerating pace of change that we are dealing with, and we need some new skills to be able to thrive in this new landscape. Now, the World Economic Forum tells us that um, there are three skills that workers of the future are going to need, and it's in their report entitled The, Th the, the Three Key Skill Sets for the Workers of, of 2030. And in it, they tell us that workers are going to need higher order cognitive skills, social and emotional skills, and technological skills. Now, I've taken that information from that graph and fleshed it out a little bit to uh, talk about how this relates to the concept specifically of intrapreneurialism and intrapreneurs. And just before I go there, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page and we know what we're talking about when we talk about intrapreneurs, and that is that they are the, the dreamers who do, who can operate at both ends of the spectrum, the people who can come up with great ideas as well as put them into action. Uh, these are the people who think and act like entrepreneurs while working inside an existing business or organization. Now, intrapreneurs have a good grasp of this new skill set that we just uh, we saw a moment ago from the, the World Economic Forum. And I've fleshed it out specifically for their, uh, that context. So they use their creativity to find opportunities and identify problems worth solving. They use their well-developed personal and social capital to progress their great ideas, and they use their intrapreneurial and entrepreneurial skills, of which technological literacy is a subset to create value through a range of means. Now, there's a lot of information in that slide, and I'm just looking so a little bit off centre because I'm looking at the PowerPoint slides there. Um, and I thought I'd just unpack maybe one, one subset from each of those three areas. So um, let's just go for the, in the first one, we'll talk about learning agility, and um, I'll unpack that a little bit. So learning agility is around having the commitment to lifelong learning, and that is our capacity to learn what we need to learn when we need to learn it. Now, new knowledge is being created at such an unprecedented rate that we can't guarantee that what we know today is going to be relevant tomorrow or certainly next year. Um, according to IBM, uh, knowledge at the moment is doubling every 12 hours. And what this means is that the skill of learning is far more valuable than any information alone. Okay, so that's learning agility. Uh, the second one I'd, I'll refer to is anti-fragility, because I've been reading this wonderful book. It's a concept introduced by um, Nassim Taleb in his book, Anti-Fragile, Things That Gain From Disorder. So anti-fragility is way beyond just being resilient, okay, which is about surviving shocks and bouncing back. But Anti-fragility goes beyond that to describe the state where we actually thrive and get stronger and better from things that are uncertain and difficult. So if you've ever come across the term, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger, <laughs> then you are living anti-fragility. Um, and the third one that I'll just mention here is around creating value. Um, at its most basic, that happens any time that action is taken which benefits or exceeds the costs. Um, in other words, it's, uh, it's, it makes something better. 
to make uh, to put it in really simple terms. So we're not necessarily talking about just monetary returns either. So here are some ways that intrapreneurs create value through their activity, and you can see that on your screen there. So intrapreneurialism comes in many forms and in many denominations. Sometimes it might be just small improvements like streamlining an onerous or time-consuming administrative process, like digitising or automating a, a data capture procedure. Sometimes it's highly visible, maybe sometimes it's highly strategic, like evolving an entire business model or adding an additional revenue stream to a business like 3M's famous post-it notes. So think of some examples of where you've created that kind of value for your organisation. Now, a little known, I just want to share some of these facts with you, and some of them are not well known, and always surprise people when I tell them this, that in fact 70% of society's most transformative innovations come from intrapreneurs. Yes, and yet we tend to give entrepreneurs a lot of credit for that. And intrapreneurs, through their corporate ventures, create more jobs than entrepreneurs. Once again, we tend to give entrepreneurs a lot more credit for that. And uh, research conducted in Europe by Babson College, um, a leading global provider of business education, demonstrated that there's a strong correlation between intrapreneurship rates and economic competitiveness, as measured by the World Economic Forum's global competitiveness data. So it's no wonder that some of the world's most progressive organisations are calling on their employees to be intrapreneurial. So smart organisations know that it's their intrapreneurs who are the future of that organisation. And it's really interesting to see that I'm noticing that on LinkedIn, people are identifying themselves as intrapreneurs now on their, on their profile. It's a good move because these are all signals from the emerging future, because we are entering the age of the intrapreneur, and especially in Australia, because there is a, a brand new report that's just literally been released, and I, I um, only read it yesterday. It's been released by the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, and I just want to say thanks to Professor Naomi uh, Bird Thistle from Griffith University's uh, Business School, who sent it through to me yesterday. Um, and I read it with great interest because it showed that Australia is leading the way in entrepreneurship, along with the United Arab Emirates and the UK. So I think we're at that stage where people who identify as an entrepreneur have a reputation as an entrepreneur and build their skill set around entrepreneurialism will be the people who will be in demand as we go further into the 2020s. And in many ways, this is like future-proofing their careers. So given that the world is becoming increasingly VUCA, and workplaces are becoming increasingly complex, there was never a better time or ever has been a better time to be an intrapreneur. So we need our intrapreneurs right now. We need your creativity. We need your possibility thinking, your problem-solving capacity. We need your persistence. We need your determination. We need all of that to help figure out alternatives when things aren't working. So we need your ability to thrive in difficult circumstances, to repurpose failure, and your determination to bring positive change from disruption. So it's time for our intrapreneurs to step forward and to mobilize their talents. We need that. So, sometimes people just need a little bit of help with that, and it's a learning journey. So, some of the things that might help with that, are, I'll share with those with you now. Number one, read about what happens in this space, and I'm going to give a blatant plug for my book there. If, uh, if you want to um, buy it or uh, would you like to just reach out to me, I'll happy, happily send out a soft copy, but it explores this whole area in great detail. So read some current literature. Um, 
The other thing you could do is uh, subscribe to Entrepreneur Magazine. So we launched it last year at this time at the summit, and it's just gone from strength to strength. You might see a few familiar faces on the cover. Uh, this afternoon, we've got Dr. Sarah Pearson and Susan Briganti, who are speakers on After Lunch. They are on the cover. Uh, the current issue, which is the one in the middle that's just been launched today, as it turns out, focuses on recruitment and entrepreneurialism as a career path. Uh, so we have um, Kyan Krippendorf on the cover. He's a prolific author. He's nominated by Thinkers 50. Radar Group is one of the top eight most influential innovation thought leaders in the world. So that's definitely worth logging into. Just, just go to uh, www.intrapreneurmagazine.com and you'll see it there. You could, if you wanted to, do a human helium program. Um, this is one of my four-month programs that unleashes your entrepreneurial talent. It's a wonderful program because people go on a journey that just brings the most remarkable outcomes. And uh, when the collective value is, is just beyond thinking, it's really worth doing. Uh, you can see that on the screen there. Uh, there's a testimonial from uh, 3M. I worked with them last year. And the, the, the value that their entrepreneurs brought through the program was over a million dollars. It was absolutely staggering. So there are some ways, but what I really wanted to do right now is give you the big news, um, and that's that we are launching a new venture right now. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you heard that, but there was a lot of cheering and clapping in the room uh, with all, what, seven people? <laughs> And they made a lot of noise for seven people, so go for it. But this is the big news, which is that as of from today, we are officially launching the Global Entrepreneurs Institute. It is an online educational community committed to supporting and advancing the work of intrapreneurs in all sectors and in all corners of the world. And we're all about learning and development. I've been an educator my whole life and this is just continuing into the next incarnation. And it's built on three premises, which is that number one, there is a vast amount of underutilized talent and potential within most organizations. This is just like it drives me nuts to think about how much cognitive surplus is within our ranks that is just not being tapped into. And if we could tap into that potential and if we could liberate it, we are literally going to unleash the next wave of productivity and effectiveness um, within our workplaces and by extension just you know, transform the world for, for the better. Um, and sometimes organizations and individuals just need a little bit of help with, with that in order to liberate that entrepreneurial talent. And that is exactly what this institute is all about. So if you go to www.globalentrepreneursinstitute.com, you will see the information there. So there's a message from me, um, and I'm just inviting you to join us in this quest to liberate entrepreneurial talent. And let's Let's just pool our capacities to solve problems worth solving and just shape the emerging future and the world that we want to live into. Uh, so there are three tracks for graduates, employees and leaders. So you can choose which one suits you. You get a number of benefits as a result of that. You know, there's a library that you can tap into. Fabulous community of wonderful people, live uh, monthly webinars, uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, of course, and then discounts to any of the um, events that we run. But here's the real value, and that is you will get a digital badge that says that you are a founding member of the uh, of the um, Global Entrepreneurs Institute. And I, you'll notice there on the screen that um, Joanne Wilson's already put her badge up on her uh, LinkedIn profile. Now, um, what's, the way we're going to work this is that we are currently in beta testing mode. So um, it's a very reasonable price to join up. It's $97 for the whole year, and you'll get all of that. And um, we are asking people to join up and be part of the, the conversation so that we can make this 
this institute absolutely amazing and really fit for purpose and uh, develop people's skills as they need it. So join now, hop on and, and go to the institute's website, join up and I'm looking forward to going on that wonderful journey with you.